morning. What happened? <laughs> okay, please be seated. Please be seated. <laughs> you don't, yeah. Well, good morning. <laughs> More. Well, I have some announcements, and then we'll get started. So, uh, <laughs> this is so, this is just St. Peter's. Isn't it great? It's just so beautiful. Uh, we have a busy summer that's lining up. We have uh, this service next week. We will have a wedding here. We're very excited to have Kim and Edward. So that's going to be fun. The following week, we will have a baptism at this service, an adult baptism. So that's going to be fun. A young lady that we met yesterday or day before yesterday who's really interested in joining. So she's excited. Uh, the Saturday after next, we will have a celebration of the life of Kevin McKay. And that will also be broadcast. All of these will be broadcast as well. So uh, that's going to be at 2 o'clock on July the 10th. Uh, and then just mark your calendars on August the 7th at 2 p.m. We will have a celebration of life of Norm Moyer. And that promises to be a pretty full group here. We'll have a lot of uh, his Methodist counterparts as well as friends from the Lion Club, Lions Club. And we're going to have his puppet here. So we're excited. So that's going to be beautiful. Uh, you'll see the insert that, if it hasn't fallen out of your bulletin, will shortly uh, for the Daughters of the King. Uh, they are holding a uh, come and see for women of all ages. Daughters of the King is really beautiful. They are, they are the lifeblood of this church and of almost any church in the Episcopal faith. And what they do is really uh, dedicate themselves to a rule of prayer. And uh, it's open. They will have a come and see on after the 830 service on July the 11th, as well as after the 11 o'clock service. It will be in the library, so come and join if you're interested in learning more about the Daughters of the King or Junior Daughters of the King. We are also starting uh, with our Eucharistic minister, uh, as well as Eucharistic visitors. They sound similar, but they're very different. Eucharistic ministers support us up here at the altar, uh, generally with the chalice. Eucharistic visitors go visit the people who are homebound. And as we started to broadcast more online, we actually find that there are more and more need for people that would like to have Eucharist brought to their home uh, after the 8.30 or the 11 o'clock service. So if you're interested, we're going to have a training session for both those to be announced, the specific dates. We'll probably do something during the day as well as during the evening. So consider uh, for yourself for one of those. The altar flowers this morning are given by Jeannie Davis in memory of Pat, Carl, Louise, and Eugenia Davis, and Ann and Dan Christensen and Leanne Deacon. Thank you, Jeannie. These are beautiful. Uh, the music this morning, the processional, which you just heard, is on this day, the first of days. There, there's an error in the bulletin, error on my part, uh, and we found out at the 830, because it says at the end of the bu bulletin that the recessional is Stand by me from Lift Every Voice, that is not correct. It was interesting to watch people try to sing to John's music in the wrong hymnal. They were like, they weren't sure what they were doing. So it's, uh, the recessional was correct on the front. It's from hymnal 567, Thine Arm, O Lord, in Days Fall. So with that, we'll start. Please stand as you're able. <laughs> Service begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page 2 of your worship booklet. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
collect of the day is proper eight, found on page 230 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page three of your worship booklet. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the readings. Our guest lector this morning is Fonda Moyer. A reading from 2 Samuel. <clears throat> After the death of Saul, when David had returned from defeating the Amalekites, David remained two days in Siglaud. David intoned this lamentation over Saul and his son Jonathan. He ordered that the song of the bow be taught to the people of Judah, as it was written in the book of Jashar. He said, Your glory, O Israel, lies slain upon your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice. The daughters of the uncircumcised will exalt. You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor bounteous fields. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul anointed with oil no more. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. <clears throat> Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death, they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you with crimson, in luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of battle. Jonathan lies slain upon your high places, I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of woman, women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perished. The word of the Lord. reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. 
For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of fair balance between your present abundance and their need so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who, did, who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. And immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that the power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning again. Please be seated. One of the more famous quotes attributed to the second century theologian Irenaeus, who is Bishop of Lyon in France, is, quote, the glory of God is the human person fully alive. 
The glory of God is the human person fully alive. It's such a wonderful statement that God's utmost desire for creation is that we be fully alive, fully living. Jesus Christ, God made man, took on human form to redeem us, redeem us from Adam and the fall, and let humankind once again flourish. Through God's grace, we are able to participate in the already and not yet kingdom of God. The glory of God is the human person fully alive. As we've gathered together in person again these past few weeks, I've witnessed and, and experienced the glory of God and the smiles and laughter and sheer joy of seeing familiar faces as if for the first time again. Each week we see a few more folks coming out of their shell, out of their bubble, and coming back to worship in person. We're starting to see a return to weekly meetings in the church, the Monday evening Buddhist gathering, the Wednesday fledglings writing group, we even have a couple of Tai Chi classes meeting on Wednesday afternoons. And I'm especially excited about the return of Joe Arn's Bible Quest classes on Monday and Thursday. Pretty soon, the place will be regularly buzzing with drop-ins and pastoral meetings and shared worship. There will be more and more chances to see the glory of God in St. Peter's fully alive. Now, I've just passed my third anniversary here at this wonderful place, and it made me reflect on our time together. That first summer and fall when Mark and I undertook a series of cottage meetings held at various folks' homes and here at the church, it was a chance for us to get to know you and you to get to know us and break bread and hear what makes you fully alive. And over and over again, I watched and heard you speak with incredible pride about the work you are doing in the world whether it was the food pantry, the Guatemala medical mission, the Wisdom House in Syria, our affiliation with the interfaith group, moms demand action against gun violence, the human rights crisis at our southern, southern border, or even marching in Conway Pride, and so on. I saw your faces light up when you talked about your experience serving. I thought then and still think that St. Peter's is most fully alive when we're serving. When we get out of this building and get into the community, we come alive. And what better way to experience the glory of God than in service? There's a part of Paul's letters to the Corinthians that we heard read just a few minutes ago that spoke to me all week as I prepared this sermon. Now Paul's writing to the Corinthians to urge them to continue to send money to support the church in Jerusalem, which is having very tough times. He says, Quote, it is a question of fair balance between your present abundance and their need so that their abundance may be for your need, end quote. Their abundance may be for your need. Now, wait a minute. The Corinthians have all the money. What can they get from the poor church in Jerusalem? What exactly is their abundance? All too often as we live our commandments to favor the poor, the oppressed, and the needy, we can reduce them, we can dehumanize them, we make them an other. You see this in social service agencies all the time. Paul here is reminding the Corinthians and reminding us to look for the gifts we receive when we serve them. See, that's what makes us different. Now, I'm not saying we don't do this. Claire and team take great joy in welcoming anyone to our food pantry on Saturday mornings. And they're quick to chat with our guests, and especially the regulars. And everyone's day is made brighter. In our trips to Guatemala, I'll never forget the shrieks of laughter and joy as the perfect outfit was found for a young girl, or the gift of clear vision returned with a pair of eyeglasses, or this discomfort alleviated by a doctor or nurse. In those exchanges, I saw and felt the almost tangible exchange, that fair balance that Paul talks about. Their abundance was for our need, and ours for theirs, at least temporarily. The glory of God is the human person fully alive. And if St. Peter's is fully alive, is in service, then I, wonder in, then I wonder if in this period of starting over, we shouldn't take a step back and look at our service work post-pandemic. Well, kind of, sort of post-pandemic. I keep wondering how we can do more. 
Since we finished the Petroselli walkway and are moving toward the selling of the Morgan House, and are finally reopening, witness all the people gathered here, is it time to turn away from our concerns with buildings and stuff and return or turn back to our service in the community? You've been great at providing new and different items for the food pantry. Toiletries, toothbrushes, feminine hygiene items, diapers are now part of our offering. Thank you. We have more folks signed up for Saturday morning service, but we could use still more volunteers, even if it's just to be present. Now, it's doubtful we'll make a trip to Guatemala in 2022. The pandemic is still very much a thing in that part of the world, with little sign of relenting. It's heartbreaking to think how many of our wonderful, life-giving clients we've lost in our churches down there. We were able to send some much-needed financial support a couple of months ago, but I know we can still do more. In this kind of, sort of, post-pandemic time, we need to get even more creative about how we do service. We need to look out and see where we can make a difference. A couple of weeks ago, I watched with pride as a St. Peter's heavy contingent led a vigil against gun violence at Simon Park in downtown Conway. A diverse crowd of black, white, young and old, straight and queer participated in the event. It was filled with creativity and imagination as a way of giving voice against the sins of gun violence. This summer, we're blessed with an intern, Trevor Larkowski, who is spearheading our effort to rebu reboot a young adult college ministry. He's come up with a name, Safe Space, which I love. And he's building programming around the very unique needs of this community, programming that no other church is going to offer, like simply being with your people in a safe environment or dealing with the stress and anxiety that paralyzes many folks that age, especially in an age of social media and internet bullying. He's also going to address sexual harassment and sexual violence. This is a very real thing for young adults, especially in the college setting. He's also going to address gender and sexual identity. And this is something we've been proud to be leading among churches in Conway, but it's going to continue to drive that even further. As I mentioned, the ministry here will be very unique among the various college and young adult ministries here in Conway. Trevor spent a lot of time understanding the needs of the community and is well on the way to make things happen. We have full support of the diocese and are looking at potential grant possibilities. Now, this is the kind of creative service opportunity that I think St. Peter's does exceptionally well. It speaks to our mission as a sanctuary for the community. We will need your help, though. There will be plenty of volunteer opportunities, and more to come as we move toward launch. Marilyn Ryszkowski is brimming with ideas for the arts ministry here. The very definition of creativity, it will be exciting to see how the arts can help restore community after so much time of being apart. We can't stop there, though. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. What are we missing? What needs in the community, any community, are we overlooking? We need your ideas, and more than that, we need your time and your commitment. In this time of restart, of starting over, we need more than anything your help. How can we support the junior high just next door? What challenges do they face as they fully reopen? What's been lost? How can we help? To those watching at home who may not come back to the physical church for a long time, how can we get our Eucharistic Visitors Program going again? We need your help in organizing, training, and visiting. There are more people who need it than ever. What might a transportation ministry look like here? Helping get folks to doctor's appointments or to the store, possibly here to the church. I think now's the time to relook and rethink all these things, to get creative, to ask ourselves, what else are we missing? I'm confident we can do great things like these and more because deep in our essence, we are a community that is most fully alive when it serves. As Irenaeus said, the glory of God is a human person fully alive. God's glory is beaming most brightly when we serve. Let's recommit to using our abundances, abundances of financial, intellectual, creative, 
all those abundances to serve those in need, wherever they are, so that their abundance may be for our need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As Paul quoted this morning in Corinthians, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Join me in reciting the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer or page 6 of your worship booklet. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became a convert from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people, form two. Page 7 of your worship bulletin, page 385 of the Book of Common Prayer. I ask for your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Larry, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God for a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may be found in him and find him. I ask for your prayers for those departed, especially the victims of the building collapse in Florida for Buck Quick, for victims of the balloon crash in Albuquerque. Pray for those who have died. We ask your prayers for members of the congregation or, and for friends including Lee, Gould and family, Thomas, Paige, Fred and Judy, Aaron and family, Edna, Shannon and Anissa, Bridget, Darla and family, Barry, Joan and Carolyn, Bob and Mary, Linda and Barry, April and family, Melanie, Elliot May and parents, Kina, Mason, Carly, Kay, Mike and family, Jen and Chris, Nelda, Selma and Jerry, Susan and family, Barbara, Elliot May, Jennifer, Vivian and family, Shane, Olivia, Austin, Liz, Rick and family, Trent, Rick, Eric, Julie, Tracy, Finn, Cassidy, and Josiah, Amy, Sarah, Nancy, Angie and Chauncey, Ryan and Lauren, Janet, Barbara, Joanne, and Franklin. 
and loving support for the Wisdom House, Moaz, Natalie, Emina, Kanza, Rasha, and all those impacted by the conflict in Syria. And continued prayers for Sarah Edmondson, Jackie Saroy, Betty Long, Judith McAfee, Karen Sue Greenwell, Eleanor Smith, Frank and Betty Jordan, Father Pat Young. We give you thanksgiving today for the people of St. Peter's and virtual and in-person visitors with us this week. We give you thanks for Eric and Donna Hutchinson, George, Barbara Ann, Eric, and Ren Jensen. We give you thanks for our small groups, for Katie and Doak. We give you thanks for Salem Missionary Baptist Church. We give you thanks for Labyrinth Center for Jewish Learning. And we give you thanks for Reverend Bear Ruiz and St. John's the Apostle, Chichikas Kananga, Guatemala. We give thanks for Trinity in Van Buren, for Holy Cross in West Memphis, for the Keller Fund for Ministry Board. Praise God in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we have the grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Confession of sin is found on page 360, the Book of Common Prayer, page 9 of your worship booklet. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I'll do it. Yeah. Thank you. We're returning to our old, our old ways. Peace. That's peace. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning again. Good morning. He's the worst. It's like... Good morning. So if you if you arrived late, I just want to remind you that there is an error in the bulletin that uh, the hymnal, the recessional is not from Lift Every Voice, page 200, Stand By Me. It is in fact 
page five, or hymnal 567. It's the front of your worship booklet. So uh, again, at the 830, people were trying to sing Stand By Me to something that John was playing very differently. And it was fun to watch, but it was interesting. So don't try it. We are, as of last week, you know, we're now taking communion of both kinds. We're making that available. So what we'll do is, uh, since it's just me, Peggy is driving to Oklahoma today to provide uh, wedding counseling for her niece and her fiance. So she's going to be right outside of Oklahoma City and they're getting married sometime in the fall. So, uh, so it's just me. So what I'll do is first myself and, and Beth will come over to this side. We'll serve the choir and then the ushers will uh, guide you in. So uh, just, and it, just come up here and then actually go back that way. And then we'll come over to this side and do the same thing. And Judy will do, will do the, you're welcome to intank, you're welcome to take from the, uh, uh, take from the chalice. Uh, it is safe, so don't worry about that. Uh, it, and it's your choice. If you just want a blessing or you only want to take the bread, all of that is good and all is accepted. So um, with that, walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 367, or page 10 of your worship booklet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us to that heavenly country where with Peter and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And wherever you are in your journey of faith, know that you are welcome at Christ's table.
close communion prayer can be found on, found on page 365 or page 12 of your worship booklet. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you leave this place, go forth in peace. Be assured that the past is forgiven and know that the future is in God's hands. Return no evil, remember the poor, pray for the sick, and make no peace with injustice in this world. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs> Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ever and